this goes on for a bit, and I'm getting a few of these little experiences, you know, stuff I never talked about, or was embarrassed about, or whatever else. You know, and of course, I'm sure it's a healthy thing to talk about things. It is, of course it is, you know, because you're, you're self-examining. Um, and, you know, in terms of Scientology, doing that with someone, fine, that's a great thing to do. Except what they do with it. They do it to keep you in there, or do it to make you do things. But anyway, self-examination is grand, so I was able to self-examine to that degree. And I felt good. I was then I'm ascribing it to Hubbard, and ascribing it to Scientology. And so buying back into the idea that, hang on, the only solution is Hubbard. I've got nothing else there. There's nothing else I can even look at. Um, and I'm on this program called Rooting Out, and this program is actually should be called the Rooting Back In program, is what it should really be called. And I found myself at one point, and uh, this lady walks up to me, and says, who's a senior executive, and said, um, you still want to leave? And I go, yeah. And she says, I don't think you will. And there's something about that moment, and then the other background experiences, and bang, that's it. And I'm, I found myself deciding to stay. Uh, and I'm put on, off administration work and put on the estates branch, and it's, it's, which is nice because you're not a you know, young man with physical work. And you know, there was a good sense of achievement and actually seeing, oh wow, I did that or I did this, you know, it's quite a good feeling, right? And so I'm not really looking at anything else at this point, I'm just sort of going along, it feels quite good, you know, and grand. So I'm back in there, I'm fully back in, back on board, dedicated even more. Do you know? Anyway, those years go on, right? And so I, I move up in the organization. I find myself uh, in America uh, doing international marketing. Okay, how are we going to really make Scientology expand? This was a question. This is 1988. Though. How are we going to really make Scientology expand? How are we going to really drive Scientology into every single household in the world? In other words, how are we going to really clear the planet? Okay. You have to get people to buy the subject. This is what you have to do. There was a number of things ongoing at that time. This was our marketing end. We had another program running um, from what was called the World Institute of Scientology Enterprise, which was which is the <laughs> God. Hubbard. Hubbard really tried wrapped up the whole business of Scientology. You couldn't be a Scientologist. You couldn't be a businessman as a Scientologist without being a member of Wise. Okay. The reason, presumably the reason was because of keeping Scientology working, right? If you're being a businessman, you're using some kind of technology, right? Hubbard talks about tech. And Hubbard had this huge complex administrative system for running Scientology called Third Dynamic Tech, or the Organization Executive Course, a massive thing. I think people have recorded every word Hubbard ever said and they've written it down to policies, and, you know, and he and they did a specific course on this, right? So if you're a Scientologist, so you say so if you're a Scientologist and you started a shop selling stuff, right? You have to run that shop on Hubbard's administrative lines. You have to do it, otherwise you're out tech, and I've got an ethics situation. Do you see? Then. So you have to sign up with WISE, the World Institute of Scientology Enterprise, which licenses the tech to you, for which you pay 10% of your income. Okay? And you buy, on top of that, you're buying specialized courses designed to train your staff in Hubbard Tech. Do you see? So a very clever little income line there, right? Plugs into everything Hubbard does. Anyway. This is part, that's actually an aspect of the marketing that we're involved in. We're involved in marketing the frontline, what we call the frontline activities, which are actually front groups, uh, such as the, um, uh, the drug awareness thing called uh, Narconon, right? Uh, which again is other bits of Hubbard tech and saunas supposed to get a person off drugs, right? It doesn't actually work, it just replaces one addiction with the Scientology addiction. That's another story entirely. But then, you know, that's where you've got this stuff. You've got the, um, the Way to Happiness, which is a little moral and ethical course for kids. And it goes into schools, right? And it's not, it doesn't say it's Scientology at all, but it's Scientology, Ethics and Morals. 
and it's L1 Hubbard, you see, so it's the idea of Hubbard being put out here as a humanitarian, educating children, you see. Then you've got a study thing called Applied Scholastic, which is Hubbard's study method. And Hubbard's study method is very, very different from any other study method. Um, Hubbard's study method is a method of making you think you can't really read or understand grammar or whatever else, and then replacing it with, well, I was talking about the, 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 the TRs and a very specific method of study of absolutely uncritical study. You're not allowed to doubt the material. If you're studying Hubbard, you say, Hubbard, it's true, the material is true. And so you must learn the material exactly. So that's the study, study method. Anyway, our job is to market this, right? And of course, Scientology as a way of life for the masses, if you like. So anyway, that's all grand, and it's quite high flying, and it's well funded. Lots, you know, it's well funded. Um, I do that for a year in America. Visa expires again. If I'm sort of back in England, running the marketing office, the UK version of that office, you know, do a lot of research stuff, and I'm very dedicated. You know, I'm doing courses all the time, and I've I've had some auditing. I've moved up the bridge to clear pretty much um i've uh, i've i've had full blown recall of my past lifetimes many past lifetimes um one of them you know finding myself on a uh, uh, on an asteroid out in deep space and then down below me i can see a spaceship crushed up against another couple of asteroids and then feeling frightened and then I was saying, what's happening? And I'm saying, oh, there's something evil on the ship, you know? Uh, it's killed me and I'm dead and I'm sitting on this asteroid, you know? And another, another incident, I find myself in the North African desert. Um, bright, harsh sunlight. I'm, uh, I'm on some kind of the flatbed jeep of some kind and I'm, I've got a weapon on my shoulder. Uh, I remember saying, him saying, what do you see? And I say, I can see green. And, he go, and I go, green, why am I seeing green? He says, okay, you can see green. Describe the green. And then this whole image became, comes to the fore. And I find myself on this Jeep and I'm seeing all these sun-blasted, sand-blasted rocks and desert ground and harsh skies and military gear. And I've got goggles on, green goggles, sand, dust goggles, sand goggles. And he says, when was that? And I go, 8,000 years ago. You know, I was like, that's, that's what comes up, that's what I say. But other incidents like that. Um, I'd done what's called the objectives uh, earlier on. The objectives, which has to do with uh, orientation of, your, of, of the physical and the, and, and the, and the, and the self in the, in the physical universe. For me, I, what it did, look, I, Again, I've not been able to deconstruct this stuff yet. What I can say in doing it, what I thought happened, what I felt happened, was that my ability to read maps became better, or that I found myself, uh, my control of cars and my sense of being in the, uh, my sense of position in space became better. That's what I recall. I'm not saying that is what happened, I think something else entirely happened, right? But that is what I thought happened, and so that was what I took from it, if you like, yeah? So this was supposed to be a, this was a massive sense of achievement for me, and a further reinforcement of how great Hubbard was. You know, so I kind of moved along in that stuff, and then I found myself down in Africa for a couple, you know, I was there on two occasions, and there's all kinds of adventures down there, uh, trying to, you know, um, I pull these uh, Zimbabwean Scientology organizations and operation out of the mire, you know. Uh, I end up getting picked up by Mugabe's police and thrown in prison and, you know, all kinds of wonderful, exciting stuff like that, you know. 